e aku rangatira, tēnā koutou katoa. Ka nui te honore, ki te mihi ki e koutou. Well, good morning everyone. It's so lovely to see the whole room packed. And I thought for a minute it was the typical um, the typical front row empty, but now we've managed to get that sorted as well. So welcome to this conference. I'd like to um, have a special welcome for the Honourable Fiona Richardson, Australian Minister for Women, and for Prevention of Family Violence. It's an honour to have you here, Fiona. And also Dr Louise Morpeth, the co-director of Dartington Social Research Unit in the United Kingdom, who is one of your keynote speakers, along with Sheridan Waitai from MSD, who will also be a keynote speaker. I would like to acknowledge Mana Whenua for their welcome of us all this morning, and acknowledge other speakers, facilitators, panel members, presenters and attendees. But the work that has gone on to put this conference together for you all, I need to acknowledge um, Claire Ward, the Chief Executive of Superu, for her work, alongside Donovan Clark. The board members, um, some of the board members are here today. I've spotted um, James Prescott and uh, Len Cook, but there may be others in the room that I haven't caught um, their eye just yet, so I want to acknowledge their work as well. It's an absolute pleasure to open Superu's Evidence to Action Conference. The theme this year, how do you know you're making a difference on the ground, is one of the key questions behind the government's social investment approach <coughs> and reinforces the importance of Superu's role in commissioning research that evaluates the impact of social sector programs. Until recently, government agencies knew too little about what which pro about which programs and services work well and which don't. They also weren't aware where their programs and services were overlapping or duplicating the work of another organisation. The government's social investment approach mm. is about targeted, evidence-based investment that will secure better long-term results for the most vulnerable New Zealanders. Rather than spending more, we want to know that we are spending right. We need to know what works and what doesn't. We want to get better results from the billions of existing spending, and we want to know where to invest new money to make the most impact. To know this, we need to understand the effect that our services have on improving the lives of vulnerable <coughs> people. Only then can we better target our investments. Superu plays an important role in ensuring the right sort of evidence exists. They secure evidence for the social sector agencies who are responsible for the policies and programs many New Zealanders rely on. Superu have informed work on the Prime Minister's Youth Mental Health Project. They've completed an assessment on the rollout of the first two children's teams and since becoming Superu, they've published five what works reports bringing together international and New Zealand research to address specific topics. They've also delivered larger pieces of work as such as that related to the first thousand days report from the Growing Up in New Zealand longitudinal study which has followed thousands of Kiwi children from birth and provides an immensely valuable cohort representative of our New Zealand population. Subaru is currently piloting an evaluation fund for non-government service providers and with Subaru's support we've developed a multi-year evidence and evaluation schedule of our key programs and services. Looking forward, Subaru is also building its ability to commission specific social sector research questions to assist government decision making. Over the last few years, we've come to understand that information is incredibly value, valuable for determining policy decisions. We know, for instance, that it is likely sole parents who go on a benefit as a teenager will cost $250,000 each over their lifetime in benefits alone. And we know that's just looking at one narrow part of their lives. And we also identified a certain group of children that will cost taxpayers an average of $320,000 by the time they're 35. Some will cost more than a million dollars. These children are known to child youth and family. They have a parent known to corrections and someone in their household is on a benefit. So we know how we can target these young people and make sure that that isn't the outcome in their lives. By identifying the risk factors such as these, we can ensure government spending is specific 
and targeted to funding interventions that have the best chance of changing that child's future. That's what the social investment approach is about, securing long-term results for vulnerable New Zealanders. This knowledge and information is starting to inform and drive spending decisions in the public sector and is having real results. Since 2011, there's been a 38% reduction in youth crime. <coughs> the number of sole parents on a benefit is the lowest since 1988. There are 43,000 fewer children in a benefit-dependent household than there were three years ago. One of our biggest challenges has been, and will continue to be, ensuring our government departments focus on getting better results for particular groups of New Zealanders. And Supru has a key role to play here. As a commissioning agent, they can access a variety of groups, private sector research providers, and organisations who can deliver hard evidence to us that will be critical to our success in addressing the long-term drivers of hardship. We want an adaptive and pioneering social sector, one that can respond to the changing needs of New Zealanders, and one that's not scared of out-of-the-box solutions. But to get there, we require more evidence, better analysis and new innovative approaches to our social challenges. We want evidence that challenges the status quo. We want good ideas, new concepts and real life expertise from unexpected sources. The more people who are involved in considering New Zealand's ongoing social challenges, the better. Evidence commissioned by Super has the ability to challenge the norm and drive a program of work that will get better results for our communities. Our community investment strategy, for instance, will create more targeted and efficient purchasing of the $331 million each year we invest into social sector services. We want to know that that funding is making a difference, and that will only happen if it's being invested in the right places. The government sees Superu as an independent and innovative organisation that can provide governments with an honest evaluation about if and what they're funding is actually delivering results. We firmly believe that we can improve the lives of children and families in New Zealand with an outcomes-focused, evidence-based approach. This will be the best way to solve problems, improve outcomes, and create strong and resilient communities. It's been a pleasure to be here today to welcome you. I want to wish you all the best for the conference. I want to add, just to create some balance, that I'm a mainlander. Rangitat is in the south. And so I have to say, go the Highlanders! <laughs> it's going to be a great game, I just know that. And I hope you have a fabulous conference in the lead up to the weekend. No reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou kato.